Welcome to the GCN Tech Show. This week, Alex is on a top secret mission in the French Alps. So we've got Cy instead. That's right, and coming up on the show, we've got the deepest deep section wheel ever, 1,000 euro socks, and we'll be discussing the tech that Filippo Ganna will be using in his upcoming hour record. Let's do it. Filippo Ganna will attempt to break the UCI hour record on the 8th of October at the Tissot Velodrome in Grenchen in Switzerland. Now, the best distance set so far, the greatest distance, is 55.548 kilometers, and it was set by Dan Bigham in August of this year. Yeah, I mean, the, 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 the hour record, it's a bike tech nerd's dream, isn't it? I mean, yeah. Well, Ganna's going to have some serious tech at his disposal, including a new Pinarello Belide track bike, a prototype of which was used by Dan Bigham when he did his hour record. The one with the uh, ribbed tube. Yes. Uh, that that's all though. In addition to sort of all the actual, you know, the, the bike tech and stuff and equipment, there's also a lot of you know, sort of physiological science and stuff that's gone into it. And Dan's effort served as a dress rehearsal to gather a lot of this kind of data to optimise Ganna's hour. So they looked at things right down to, to sweat rates and how that impacts uh, performance throughout the hour. And apparently when, when Dan did his hour, he lost over three kilos in water. Really? Yeah. It's almost as much as me and your average GCN show. Yeah, you're doing all right so far, there's no patches. No, nope, so far so yeah. good. Okay. Um, now his drivetrain also, as you'd imagine, has been fully optimised. Traditionally, riders use like a road pitch chain, don't they, for efficiency. But following extensive testing, they say, on the track and also in the lab on machines, they're actually going to use an Izumi Kai half-inch track chain, which is kind of cool, isn't it? And then it's been further optimised by Muckoff, who are applying their incredibly slippery, ludicrous AF race loop to it. Uh, these chains are paired with special chain rings that have been supplied by Watch Shop. And it's crazy because the, the total optimization time to prepare the chains and corresponding chain rings is said to be 17 hours. Ooh. And this is because um, Muckoff say that they're doing a hydrosonic uh, cleaning and, and surface prepping of the chains and chain rings, and then doing several cycles of applying and reapplying the ludicrous AF lube, because apparently this, this actually, they've, they've measured gains from, from doing it in this way. Yeah, and you might be wondering how much saving is made after 17 hours of prep? 15% apparently. Yeah, but 15% sounds like a massive number. It does. But when you actually break it down and put it into the context, it's not as much as what you might think. No. So if we take that 15% and apply it to the drivetrain, a, a good sort of track bike drivetrain, you can sort of say as a rule of thumb, it's 98% efficient when it's all clean and got good lube on it, right? And then if we say that Filippo Ganna is bashing out 460 watts for the hour, just casually, then with that 2% drivetrain loss, that equates to around nine, nine watts that he's losing through his drivetrain. Okay. If we save 15% on that, one to 1 1.5 watts saved. Yeah. Yeah. So not, not much. It's definitely a marginal gain. A marginal gain, but yeah. In the hour record, everything counts and you know every watt counts and you'd take it. And they actually worked out that in the case of uh, Dan Bigham's hour record, that 15% drivetrain efficiency improvement was uh, well calculated to be worth 87 additional meters. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah, when you break it, it down like that. Yeah. I would not turn down 87 additional meters. No, absolutely if I was not. I'm doing our record. Um, and it's not just the uh, the chain that's been optimized for 17 hours either, is it? Because the chain ring, that watch up chain you mentioned, that also apparently has a, a special additive coating on it to further reduce friction. But interestingly, watch up and Ineos are quite tight lipped about the cranks, aren't they? Which look mega aero with that fair design, but we don't know much about it. When you think, what was it, 2014, when uh, Jens Vogt kicked off the whole hour record thing, and you, know, you look at his his bike and, and the Shimano road cranks, road chain as well on his bike, um, they look so antiquated now compared to what's being used. It's yeah, it's crazy. Probably Jens penalised, wasn't he? Yeah. Incredibly by that antiquated drivetrain. <laughs> the big thing with Ganna though, is, is literally Ganna. I mean, he is, for a cyclist, he's a big lad. Yeah. I mean, very, very powerful, but he's got 
well, he's less aerodynamic, isn't he? Yeah. So, uh, what, six foot three, so about 190. Yeah. Uh, and then also 83 kilos, I think we've seen it yeah. quoted. The so, irony being, if you stick him in a Welsh nightclub on a Saturday night, he's the skinny one. Yes. So, big for a cyclist. Big for a cyclist, <laughs> easy. Say. Fortunately, the weight doesn't matter too much on uh, on the hour record, but his size and his frontal area does. Um, and so, if you remember back to when we did a, a tech show on, on Dan Bigham's hour record effort, uh, in that it, we calculated that his drag coefficient, his CDA, was as low as 0.155 Ooh. when he did the hour, which Slippery. is it's obscene. I mean, that is uh, incredible to be that, that aerodynamic. And it's about 25% more aero than Ganna. So Ganna's CDA is around sort of 0.2, right? But you'd expect that with the sort of expertise of, of Dan and all the latest equipment and, you know, some aero trickery, they can, you know, probably get his CDA down to maybe like 0.185, which is, which is pretty good for someone of his size. Yeah. Now, the question of how far he can go, though, I guess depends as much on his power output as well, of course, yeah. and also the atmospheric conditions. You'd imagine that Ineos are going to be pretty confident that even with unfavourable weather conditions, yeah. he's going to be able to break that record. So in terms of power output, well, I've heard he can put out 450 just on the way to the shops. Yeah. So 460 you mentioned? Maybe well, that's it. I mean, with that, with that drag coefficient and sort of average sort of conditions, you know, you know, maybe you can do sort of 50, 57 kilometers for if you just like 460 watts. That's around that sort of time. Mad, isn't it's it? It's a huge distance. But I think the thing you've got to remember is the first rule of hour records is that no one goes as far as they think they're gonna go <laughs> in an hour record, right? So so I think uh, you know, I would I would go for, for less than that. I mean the effort is just it's not like riding an effort on the turbo or on the road. It is just unrelenting and there's the G forces and the concentration on the track is just really is savage. Yeah. Interesting though, Alex Dowsett broke the first rule of our records, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Because he actually uh, undergeared himself yeah. and could have gone further. Yeah, and he had he actually had really in his first hour record, this is when he broke it. Yeah, the um, they uh, had really good atmospheric conditions. That said, I am gonna predict my prediction, right, is he's gonna do uh, 56 and a, and a half. 56.5 kilometers. Really? I reckon he's going to do. Okay, right. Get involved it's in the comments section. Should we have a poll as well? Yeah. Over in the app? Yeah. We'll um, do that. How yeah. far do you think he's going to go? That's right. Um, thinking of unfavorable atmospheric conditions. Yeah. Can I tell you a random fact I know about Brandy Wiggins? Is that a record? Go for it. Love so, it. So, the atmospheric conditions deteriorated so much in the days between its like dress rehearsal and the hour record that they had to print a smaller chain ring for him. To yeah, use. No way. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so yeah, had had he had better conditions, he would have potentially properly put it on the shelf. Yeah. But yeah, they had to they had to print out a new. Uh, that new is mad. I, mean, I, the... I say print. It might have been machine. I yeah. can't remember. But well, anyway. the, other, the other thing is um, that prediction. If if he does do fifty six and a half, that crucially is more than the best human effort set by Chris Boardman on the Lotus 108 mm. in the Superman position. Because oh. that was 56.375? You're looking at me like I might know the answer. I don't know the answer. I'm going to Google it. I'm going to Google it. Yeah, it was! Yes. There you go. Anyway, let us know what you think Gannon's going to do um, down below. Vote in the app. Ten points for that bit of trivia, Ollie. It's time now for Hot Tech and Cross is coming. Cross is here. Mm. Cross has already started and Canyon have just announced their latest in-flight cyclocross lineup. So the frames haven't changed from the ones that have won a gazillion world titles under Matthew Van der Poel and Celine Del Carmen Alvarado, but they've got some seriously jazzy new paint jobs yeah. as well. But what's interesting, we thought anyway, was that all of the specs by the lowest model, the SL6, have got power meters fitted as standards from Quark or from 4i. It's kind of cool, isn't it? That is cool, isn't it? Like bikes increasingly come in with, with, with power meters. Yeah. I'm all for that. Um, that's not all, though. Right now is um, the Ironman World Championships in that's Kona. Right. Yeah. Now, GTN, of course, they're all over this. They're out there. They're covering this. 
And the thing is with, with the Ironman World Champs in Kona is you often get a load of highly UCI illegal tech uh, being launched yes. and, and deployed there. Think along the lines of beam bikes and um, really, really long socks. It's ironic, isn't it? that triathletes who normally wouldn't be seen dead in a pair of socks mm. suddenly rock out really long ones. No rhyme or reason to it. No. No. Um, but what, what, what's dropped this time, what GTN have found, right, is the new head jet 180. Yes. Look at this. This is the deepest deep section aero wheel I think we've ever seen. It's 180 millimetres deep. And before you get worried about what it's going to be like in crosswinds, well, it's, uh, it's, it's only a rear wheel. Like, would look cool if you laced one up as a front wheel yeah, as well, that wouldn't would be it? Cool, yeah. I mean, you might spend a lot of time on the deck, but it would look very cool if you ever could keep it upright. Now, you might be wondering, given that it's almost a disc wheel, but not quite, why they don't just use a disc wheel. Bizarrely, seeing as triathletes can use basically anything they want at any time, they're not allowed to use disc wheels at Kona. Too windy, apparently. They'd all fall off. I know, strange. So some other stats for you. The uh, 180 has a 21 millimeter internal width. It's tubeless ready and has a maximum external width of 32.5 millimeters. It's also available in a disc brake and, if you save the rim brake fans, a rim brake version, and they're around 1,200 grams each. Yeah, the rim brake version is slightly heavier, we noticed, than yeah, the disc version. Yeah, about 20 grams heavier. Yeah. But you know what, right? I'm thinking about this, this, this wheel. Gosh. I love a loophole, yes. right? And I'm thinking, what if you use this wheel and combine it with a dork disc? You've basically circumvented the rule and you've got a disc wheel. Finally, a use for dork discs too. Has anyone invented an aero dork disc? That's, that's like it. your calling in life. Yeah, right? maybe that's to invent what, yeah. an aero dork disc, like <laughs> yeah. a giant one. Yeah, sorted. You'll need a dork disc for your disc brake rotor as well on the other side, won't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go on then. Oh, I'll do it, yeah. I'll get on it, yeah. I'll write that down. Well, that's, that's not all. There's something else new out, right, that is, uh, well, triathletes, they're going to love it. So some new aero socks, and they cost 1,000 euros a pair. Whoa, holy mackerel, that's expensive. Even more than, quite a lot more, in fact, than the fine that Annemiek van Vluten received for wearing said aero socks that were pulled up so high, the UCI... Basically, they'd kind of... The sock police. It contravened the ban, didn't it? Uh, whilst she was winning the World Road Race Championships that happened at the weekend, and you can watch on GCN Plus. Yeah. <laughs> if you want to see them. Seamless. That so the, these socks are made by a company called Sockaloon, and the aero socks, well, they're, they're called the fastest sock on the planet, or FSOTP for short. Sock. Yeah. I think. It's quite a bold claim. It is. Name, isn't it? But a lot of pros have been spotted wearing them. And, well, the 1,000 euro ones, they're actually fully custom made and, and bespoke fitted to you. But if, but if you want just regular ones, well, they can be yours for 45 euros. Really? Mm. I asked them how much it would cost to get me custom socks. And yeah. they said it would be more than 1,000 euros. I think with your ankles, ankles so yeah. Extra yeah. material. That was it, yeah. More yeah. fabric, more yeah. labour. But, um, but, yeah, I mean... They do say that even those 45 euro ones will save you six watts at 47k an hour. Yeah. I mean, six watts is not to be sniffed at. I mean, yeah. we've already talked about Philippe Ogana saving one and a half watts. Yeah, yeah. Well, people laugh at aero socks, and I know you're not a fan, uh, and a lot of people still aren't convinced. And I'm not for one second suggesting that everyone goes out and buys aero socks. But if you are chasing, you know, watts and, and those last few gains, then, um, well, they are demonstrably faster and they do make sense aerodynamically. I will concede that they make sense aerodynamically and they are demonstrably faster. There's just something a little bit, I don't know, it's that thing, isn't it? A lot of the things we do as cyclists, it's hard to justify to non-cyclists. Yeah. But if you spoke to any normal person yeah. and said that you'd bought a sock that's more aerodynamic, I think they'd just be like, that's it, we're done. Like, there's, no, there's no more. A thousand euros. Well, yeah, exactly, and there is no justification for that. <laughs> I mean, like, presumably it's the same fabric, right? Just mildly tailored. Mm. I do feel like that's a bit of an Emperor's New Clothes kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, let us know what you think in the comments. <laughs> sure you will. Sure you already have. The World Championships uh, were last week, and there was some really cool tech on display in the time trial, which we should talk about. You can watch that on demand as well. Yeah, you can. So the, um, the main takeaway was that a lot of the riders seem to be using these aero base layers um, with sort of ribbing on them that then 
uh, create a texture through the skin suit. This is something we spoke about on a texture a few weeks back, um, and a lot of the riders were, were seen using these, including Sleep Ogana. Back to Ghana, but he also had some other interesting tech going on. Can I can I just stop you there? Actually, before we move on, can I put aero vests in the same bracket as aero socks, which is effective, demonstrably so. But again, I mean, how do you justify an, well, the, well, an aero aero vest? Well, this is the thing we we spoke about this before, but the, the, the way that aero vests have come about is ridiculous. It's basically because the UCI banned using aero skin suits with texture on the skin suit. So all they've done now is make the skin suit really thin and you wear a vest underneath it. It's just ridic it's ridiculous. There we go. Yeah. Anyway, um, but yeah, back to Ganner, as you said. Um, he was displaying a new cask helmet, wasn't he? Uh, and also some new some new extensions, which uh, which presumably he's going to be using for that hour record as well. Yeah, so the cask helmet we've seen before, it's mainly the visor that's new. So it's now got a lip underneath, which is apparently, uh, it helps sort of, sort of, well, trip the airflow a bit at the base of the visor and then help better guide it over the shoulders. And his uh, 3D printed extensions on his TT bike, rather than having normal risers on them, they had a really weird shape underneath the elbow pads, which, they kind of look like a, an antler off a deer, but there's definitely some aero trickery going on there, of which we don't know. But no, there you go. I definitely prefer the cask aero lip to the specialised head condom. <laughs> yes. So, uh, so yeah, definitely gets my vote. Yeah. Now time for comments of the week. Now comments of the week, Sai, right? Mm -hmm. we, it begins with the comments of the week jingle. Oh yes. Which have, so, you know, I've 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 got one. Hank did one, there are comments under that, people saying that they preferred Hank's and we prefer mine. I think you need to do one. I'm quite looking and then, forward and to this. Can, yeah. <clears throat> I used to be a choir boy, you know, when I was little. Yeah. Comment of the week! The with the with geek, the with the with the with the with the with geek, the with the with the with Cool. Right, so uh, first comment this week is, um, is is under Alex's excellent video where he's been doing his super light bike. It's from Michael Williams, and it, well, we were asked if is Alex going to beat me in the hill climb that he's going to do on his super light bike for, for less than a thousand pounds. And Michael Williams has commented, "Let's hope so. Otherwise, the GCN crew aren't going to have Ollie as the perpetual butt of all of their fitness jokes." Michael, Michael, don't worry. It's going to take a lot to shift that mantle, isn't it, uh, that you carry? So I stoically. I just don't know what I can do. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> I just don't know what I can do. Keep doing it, mate. Keep doing what you did. Uh, right then, underneath the show last week, Ethan Godridge said, uh, Thanks, Alex and Hank. No fails from me. My granddad is an engineer and does any complicated bike maintenance. There we go. And he, yeah. Oh, he wants another jingle pole. Yeah. He, well, well we've, we've done it for you. Um, and uh, again, underneath uh, the Alex's light bike, this is this is from Ken. He, without doubt, thinks Alex is going to beat me. Does he? In this hill climb race, yeah. Um, have none of you ever sandbagged? I don't play poker, but if uh, you know, if there's more than one cyclist playing, I'm in. Um, so yeah, uh, it's not looking good for me. I don't think. I don't um, know. I mean. I don't think Alex is a sandbagger, is he really? I don't know. Well, you'll have to tune in and watch the, the, the video of the hill yeah. climb with the £1,000 bike. Coming out on Friday on yeah. GCN, that one. Time now for the bike vault. You've oh, not been on the bike yes. vault for a, for a while. Not a long time. No, I judge bikes, but um, not in a public forum, just on the app. Oh, cool. Well, uh, the Bike Vault is where you submit your bikes uh, using the GCN app, and then we judge them to be nice or super nice. If they're super nice, Sai is going to ring the bell. It's down there. Um, and um, well, you can you can also vote on all the bikes featured and submit your own in, in the GCN app. So, without further ado, last week's most super nice bike is this Ooh. Cervelo S5. That does look good, from? doesn't it? It's from Champagne on Beer Wages. <laughs> nice. New S5 on tour, quick stop in Canberra on the way to the world in Wollongong. Yeah, what do there you make of that? Uh, I am a big fan of an all black bike. I know there are people out there that say black bikes are boring, but that is not a boring bike. Yeah. That's cool. It I is like a, that. That, is a, that is a really nice bike. I'm a, 
The wheels are aligned. It's a nice new Ultegra on it as well. I, I'm, um, I, it is irking me that the rear wheel is slightly cropped out of the frame, but I am, um, I can go super nice on that one, I think. Yeah, that is, that's been done yeah. well, I think, isn't it? Right, you ready? There we go. There we go. Who have we got next? Next up, we have got Ted Ward P, or T. Edward P. Um, check out this Colnago Arabesque. Oh, yeah, that very nice. That is an absolute beauty with Campagnolo. Super record. Yeah. Oh, do you know what I really like? Uh, that Brooks saddle and then the, the sort of matching brown bar tape. Do you? you don't, you're not one of those people that wears like a black suit with brown shoes, are you? No, but I'd wear a navy suit with brown shoes. See, that to me looks like a black suit with brown shoes. It's like, oh, a, I like yeah. it's an absolutely stunning bike, utterly gorgeous. But I personally would have gone for black. Bike. He's not in Biggie Smalls. The, the photo is taken somewhere weird. I don't know where it is, but it looks like there's carpet on the wall. Carpet on the wall, or is it? Oh yeah, now it makes sense. Not, yeah. not just a carpeted wall, but actually a carpeted floor. Yeah, uh, it's still a bit weird, isn't it? I, it is. I think I'm going to go nice on that one. Yeah, okay, no, I'll agree with that one. Um, yeah, next up we've got Christopher Harrell, 44, uh, with a chameleon paint job on his Specialized Tarmac SL5. Wowzers. What do you make of that? Well, I can't take my eyes off the uh, LED lighting that's behind it, actually. It looks all super futuristic. Yeah. Um, I'm a big fan of that. And whilst I wouldn't use shiny bar tape, personally, it does look kind of cool in a photo, doesn't it? It does, doesn't it? I mean, that is, yeah. With it, my, my sweating, I'd slip off as soon as I held on the yeah. drops and uh, face plant into my wahoo, so to speak. But... Um, Do you know what? It's, it's not in Biggie Smalls, though. No, that uh, seems like a catastrophic error. Yeah, and um, I think the bike is, is being lost a bit in, in the background. I mean, that's clearly his favourite colour, isn't it? Because he's got his curtains, his wall and his bike all in the same colour. Yeah. Also, uh, I know this is... Oh no, actually, no, I was about to say the uh, valves aren't aligned with the tyre logos, which is not something that ever bothers me, but I know is something yes. that... Uh, we you know, we, we can't let any old riffraff into the vault. No, no, Banks no. are nice. I can't understand, like, the bike vault's been going a long time now, why would you not stick it in the big ring? Yeah, I know. Did you miss the memo? They I mean, did, they, yeah. Uh, anyway, okay, next up, uh, that's just a nice, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm really sorry. There we go. Uh, Keith Noon, is it almost worthless, he asks. Yes. Is it a perfect JRA rig for my kid at college? Absolutely. I tell you what, I like that. I actually, I follow an account on Instagram yeah. called Commuter Bike Club, and it's basically retro mountain bikes from the early to mid 90s that have been kind of like made to look just really cool, stick a pair of like massive tan wall tires on yeah. there, like maybe like a porter rack up front. Honestly, I've been trawling eBay for 90s mountain bikes. Right, now this is gonna be controversial and this is gonna wind people up, right, but I like trolling the audience. This is, this is an example of, you don't have to have a really expensive bike for it to be super nice. Right? No? And there are rule infractions here. Okay. But if the bike is clean, it's old and it's, I, I just love it when something's super functional. Yeah. So I'm going to say super nice on this one. Cool. I know they're all, they're all, oh, they're going mental on the keyboards here P now. Particularly that poor guy with the Conaga Arabesque. Yeah. And the one with the Specialized, <laughs> the lovely paint job. But no. There you go. Yeah. And uh, next up, we've got this bike from Amateur, who uh, has, well, this is the first one I've seen. That's the new Canyon Ultimate CFSLX. No cables at the front, look. You'd like to say it's in the wild, but clearly it's not. It's actually in his nan's garden. Yeah, I, I think, I mean, look at it. It's really clean. It's what's well, new. Uh, <laughs> he's um, lined up his valves and wheel logos and everything perfectly. It's all clean, there's nothing on it. I, I mean, I'm going... Hold up, hold up, aren't the cranks in the wrong place? They're level. No, they're, uh, they're upside down. They're not level. I still think that's, I think that's... I, oh, I th really? Oh, well, we have to agree. So if you don't think it is, then it's nice. I mean, I feel a little bit like you know, you can't not give the Colnago and the Specialized to a super nice, this one. All right, fair, fair enough. I mean, it was a super nice from me, but it's, we have to agree, so it's not, it's just a nice. Just, just so you know, we're talking about your crank position. Your bike's amazing <laughs> for your crank position. 
Terrible. Um, okay, right, next up we've got this one from Rick Witt, yeah. 1611. Just purchased my first aero bike. I did the Cambrian Co Sportive on the 17th of September, and I'm hooked, so needed something a little better than my trusty Cube Peloton without breaking the bank too much. So it's a giant Propel Advanced 01. Oh, God, no, I'm drive side. Uh, it's non-drive side. There was me going, oh, we've got a nice bike, yeah. that's cool. It's non-drive side. Okay. Non -drive, it's nice. So basically, flip the bike around, nice clean backdrop, stick it in the big ring, put your cranks at uh, three o'clock. Yeah, must try harder. Okay. Must try harder. I'm it's like if I was a teacher marking this as homework, that would be a C me okay. at the bottom. Anyway, right. uh, that is all we've got time for on this week's GCN Tech Show. So I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, give it a thumbs up. Um, make sure you subscribe. And um, well, we'll be back next week. Hopefully Alex is back from his top secret mission. I don't think he is actually. I think he's, I think it's quite a long one. It is, yeah. yeah. Is that basically you saying, I hope Alex is back, Simon can bugger off. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Ollie. <laughs> yeah.